called Chippy. Richard the Carpentier. Chippy, just announced you're going to retire at the end of the season. How do you feel now the news is out there? Um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Like some days I felt really positive about what I'm doing next. Uh, and other days I uh, still think I've got more in my legs, but now it's out there kind of like pulling a plaster off. I'm quite like content with it and excited for what's, what's to come in the future. And I feel like I've had, a, I've had a good career, been around the world, played with some amazing players and yeah, really enjoyed it. And yeah, I'm happy I'm content and happy, yeah. Yeah, 12 years as a professional rugby player in sevens and in the 15s game. Where did your love of rugby come from and, and how did you grow up into the game? Yeah, so I was playing football until I was about 15 and then um, I was in like the B team, C team at school and then got forced, I was in the centres and then got forced to play in the back row and then it all went from there and then started enjoying it. Um, and then yeah, from like school to uni, like chased it, got told I wasn't big enough and I was not never going to play professional rugby when I was 18. I uh, went to uni in uh, Uick or Cardiff Met I think it's called now and then I went on from there. Absolutely loved it, kind of fell in love with it and I like ended my school and th all through uni. Um, so yeah, big, like, big shout out, has got to go to Cardiff Met and Kirk and Grammar for pushing me through to carry on playing. How easy was that transition from university rugby into the, to the senior game? It's a bit different because obviously when I was at uni we played Wednesday then Saturday uh, and on, when we played on the Saturday we played in the, the Welsh League so we just had all angry old Welsh men trying to beat up English students which was quite fun and then uh, on the Wednesdays we'd be trying to beat up other university teams so when I went into, prim into the Premiership with Leicester um, it was like, although there was quite a lot of physicality there was no fighting so it was quite actually a step in the right direction so <laughs> it was en enjoyable yeah uh, it was good but it was a massive shock. Yeah, you went to Leicester, as you say, and enjoyed a spell at Nottingham. Was that really where the rugby dream kind of started for you? Yeah, like um, I want, I'd love to have played more at Leicester, but when I signed for them, it was like signing for United back in the day. Um, I went there and I was behind, sat behind eight or nine internationals in the back row, so I wasn't, I was never really going to get a sniff. Um, but an amazing environment to be in with Richard Cockerell at the helm and like some amazing players to learn off. So yeah, it was it was great to be there and then to get some game time at Nottingham uh, and then from Nottingham to Worcester after that, it was, it was good. Yeah, and during your time at Leicester, I think it was where your, your England Sevens kind of career started. How did that happen? How do you suddenly become a, a Sevens player after playing Fifteens? Yeah, so I was, I was at uni still and um, it was on my last year of uni and uh, Ben Ryan rang me up from the Sevens and originally I thought it was some of the lads like trying to do one over because we used to do that quite a bit, ring up people and tell them that they had trials at Cardiff Blues or whatever. So when they told, rang me and said I was going to uh, play for England Sevens, I hung up on Ben Ryan a couple of times before I went down. Um, and then got in the setup there. Um, sevens was always something I enjoyed at school. Um, and the way I play the game, well, I played the game, I don't know, like past tense now, I suppose. Um, I enjoyed space and getting my hands on the ball and the kind of kickoffs is what I was good at and getting the ball back that way. Um, but yeah, like, the way I've played throughout my career has kind of been um, what, looking for space out wide rather than running into people bashing up the middle um, like your bigger players like your Josh McNally's and, and Tom Dunn's like running into brick walls. I'd, I'd more to prefer to run around the brick wall. Um, so transition from 7 to 15 is kind of, yeah, both games have done me well. Yeah, and in that 7s environment, it was eight, eight years um, with, with the rose on your chest, some amazing memories and you got to experience some great places around the world. Are there any spots that kind of you think, oh, I'd love to, love to go back there and play again? Yeah, um, kind of in and out with the sevens, obviously like kind of yo-yo back from sevens to fifteens a couple of times, but if I had to pick some spots to go back to uh, Vancouver, um, sevens was always an amazing atmosphere, uh, and Cape Town, um, just because everyone in, in South Africa loves their rugby. And I've got some really like, great memories. We, we beat South Africa in, in Cape Town in the final in the second year there uh, and there was like 55,000 people and obviously you know how passionate South African fans are so to, it's always nice to beat someone at their place. Obviously we've, we've done it a couple of times this season like Quinns at Twickenham and uh, Gloucester away the last two games. Like, so ch to shut those away fans up was amazing. Um, so those are two standout memories from the sevens. And then you're such a tight-knit group when you're away with the sevens, a small number of you. Did that help create some unbelievable memories off the field as well as on? Yeah, um, so we were really lucky with our group. We kind of stuck around for 
five or six years together, which like not many sevens teams do that. Um, with people in and out, like your Rory McConaughey's and, and Will Will Muir came in and out. Um, and it was great to see them going to do amazing things at 15. So I think that's what kind of pushed me to go back. I was thinking, well, if horse can do it, I think anyone can do it, you know? So um, <laughs> um, it was good. And yeah, we, we had some, some good times off the field, but none that can be shared on camera, unfortunately. Some, some quiet nights out. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Moving on swiftly yeah. then. Um, yeah. you, you've been open. You've talked about the struggles of kind of when the, there were issues with the, the sevens team and coming into the COVID period where things were unknown. How proud are you of yourself for kind of digging in, being determined, getting back into the 15s game with, with Harlequins before obviously arriving here? Yeah, so um, it was pretty mad. Obviously, we, we all uh, lost our jobs during COVID um, and not really knowing what was next for me. Um, I think sevens and missing out on different things in my career, kind of ups and downs, give me a massive sense of perspective. And obviously being married with, with my, it wasn't just my son at the time and I've got my daughter, but that gives me like a different view on life. Like rugby's such a luxury in it. So, so amazing to have done something so cool. Like I think when you're in it, it's hard to, realize how lucky you are to be doing it but covid and that like losing my job with the sevens and thinking oh actually well, how lucky was i getting back into it the last two or three years have kind of been a breeze all the hard sessions have been a bit easier because you know kind of what it's like the other side um but now it, it's, it's been great to get back in it like obviously coming straight back in and being part of that premiership winning team at um quinn's and like coming back in and finishing my career with a Premiership winners medal, even though I only played five or six games for them, was like pretty mad. And then being at Bath and seeing things, I don't know, I'm not saying I'm the catalyst, but we've just gone like this since I've come in. Like we've been, <laughs> we've been doing amazing. And obviously this year under Johan, we've really, really uh, like tightened our boots and got, got a lot better as a team. And, it, and it's been amazing to see. And I can only wait to see what things are happening next year. I'm sure it'll only be positive. Yeah, it feels like you've been here for, for donkeys, really, yeah. uh, which is testament to how well you fit in with the group. And it, it's, it's your character that's kind of led you to have the, the plaudits that have come in today. What have you got to say to your teammates and, and people that you've worked with throughout the years, uh, how much they mean to you? Yeah, like, obviously I said in that quote before, like, your journey shaped by the people you meet along the way. And I've been lucky enough to be in so many environments with people from top to toe, uh, like top good blokes, good people, good men and women who've been around the sport. Um, to mention a few, like Katie Warren had a massive impact on my career in the middle. Um, I think I was a bit of a, like, what's the word? I was a quite a short northerner. Like I didn't, I didn't think anything of mental health. Yeah, and then, and Katie obviously op opened my eyes to like the power of like, being able to control your thoughts and like, well, being not even control and just be, being aware of what kind of person I am. And she made a massive impact on my career halfway through. Um, I kind of wish I'd known what I knew, what I learned from her uh, at the start of my career. Um, and then coaches and players, like I played with some amazing, amazing players, like from from Leicester, from at the start at my Leicester career and finishing up at Bath, like seeing the young lads come through and push through. It's been amazing. I feel truly lucky to have played with such amazing people and been coached by some, some great coaches. Yeah, you've had some amazing moments in your career as well. Uh, yeah. Winning Player of the Year for England Sevens 2017, winning a, a Commonwealth uh, bronze medal, uh, a World Cup semi-final yeah. winner medal, Prem finalist as yeah. well, or Prem winner yeah. as well. So yeah. when you think back, do you feel privileged to have been part of such a journey? Yeah, kind of. Right, when you write it all down, it's like, that's pretty mad. Like, I can't, it doesn't really even sink in, I've done it. I'm massively privileged, like, such an amazing trip. Um, couldn't have done it. There wasn't, like, there wasn't many passengers along the way. Like, everyone I've worked with has, like, pulled their weight from start to finish. And, yeah, just to play a tiny part in some of that is something I look back on very fondly when I, when I, when I come to be a proper old man and <laughs> have a cup of tea and sit on the sofa. If you look at the chippy that came through university mm. um, and to the chippy that you are now as a professional leaving the game. Is there any advice you'd give to your, your younger self, uh, thinking back? Keep your head out of the way. Um, nah, I've got um, plenty more cuts and scrapes since I started. Um, what advice would I give myself? Nothing much more than I say to the young lads now. I think I always say to the young lads when everyone asks me, like, what's your best piece of advice? Is like, take something from every session. I know it sounds cliche, but 
there's always someone on the pitch, young or old, who knows something you don't. And if you can pick up a tiny piece of information like every other session or every session, you're going to like grow and grow and be better and better. Um, and not being dismissive of people either. Like, like your glass is never full. You always, you can always learn something. And even like, even now I've got a week left of, of training and I'm still like, I know it's mad, but I'm still like looking to learn stuff from people because that's just the kind of person I am. But no, nah, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's what I'd say to young Chippy. And I'd say like, relax, it's going to be all right. Like you go, I think the older you get, the more you enjoy things. Um, and when you, when I was younger, I, did, I think I was just kind of so het up on like trying to be the best version of myself and trying to do everything. I didn't uh, enjoy the moments, but yeah, I've, been, I've enjoyed a lot of moments throughout my career and I've made memories to last a lifetime, so I'm happy. Yeah, talking of learning, you've you've been learning to be a barista with Ben Spencer today, uh, yeah. which uh, yeah got him a bit angry by the sounds of it. But uh, what's next? Uh, is that sort of going to help you in your in your next venture? Yeah, so me and my wife are looking to set a coffee shop up on the Isle of Wight uh, in Benbridge. So if you're over there, get yourself down. Um, yeah, Benny Spencer obviously he's a proper coffee nose and he knows his thing, knows his stuff, knows everything about it. And I had a little go on his. Um, machine out the front which is a bit different to the one we've been using recently um, and he wasn't best pleased but yeah you've got to start somewhere I'm, I'm still learning the ropes um, but I assure you if you ever come to the coffee shop uh, on the Isle of Wight we'll, um, I'll be a lot better than I am now so yeah that's that's the next plan. Well before then one more week of professional rugby Chippy it's been an absolute pleasure having you here at Bath Rugby congratulations on an amazing career and we wish you all the best. Thanks very much I've loved it.